Hello, how's it going? Today we're going to be talking about music from outer space. Yes, the chances are if you have ever looked into Synth DIY on the internet, you would have bumped into this website. It looks crazy, I know. It's like the kind of quintessential awesome early 2000s style of website. And you will have noticed it is completely jam packed full of interesting products to do with analog synthesizers and modular synthesizers. This website was put together and made by the late and great Raymond Wilson, who was a very prominent figure in the synth DIY community and his website and projects are still helping people get into synths and build synthesizers even to this day. When I was getting into synth DIY, this is whilst I was building circuit bent instruments and hoping to kind of make them bigger into something that was a bit more of a modular synthesizer kind of machine, I found that the Music From Outer Space website was very helpful. It was full of loads of information and projects that would help anybody from a beginner up to an intermediate to an expert uh, synth DIY stuff kind of get on their way. He also wrote a book that was published by Make. This was a very helpful book for me and uh, whenever anybody asks what to read if they're wanting to get into synth DIY I always suggest it. In fact I bought a few of them and I can't show you it right here because I've lent them out every time and I still haven't gotten back so either that means it's great or you know they're, they're hoping to read it at some point. The book is made for synthesizer beginners and it talks about his experience and it focuses around a big project of making a synthesizer. It's the kind of book that you read a bit of it once and then you walk away try and figure out what they're saying put it into practical form and then slowly but surely it all starts making sense and comes together. And if you're looking for some good reading material about beginning your DIY synthesizer adventure, well I definitely recommend this book. The Music From Outer Space website documents a whole load of different projects that he did, all the way from guitar pedals, all-in-one delay effect boards, little sound generators like a weird sound generator, up to more advanced things like different synthesizer modules like oscillators, filters, envelope generators, voltage controlled amplifiers, you name it it's in there there's pages on different types of power supplies how to build a cabinet for a modular synthesizer and more advanced projects like sequencers all-in-one synthesizers like the sound lab the sound lab ultimate as well as an advanced rather involved project that is a vocoder if you're even a little bit interested in starting a diy synthesizer journey i definitely recommend you having a look at that website over the years i've built a few of raymond wilson's projects at the start of my journey back in 2011 ish i purchased a few circuit boards off him and built them and some of them I'm still using. A few of them need a little bit of work here and there though because I did make them pretty badly. <laughs> For instance, this project I built back in 2014 or something, which is uh, the Sound Lab Ultimate, which is an all-in-one synthesizer project which basically encompasses a bunch of his modules into one circuit board. This sits behind a panel with three voltage-controlled analog oscillators, a filter, an envelope generator, a few LFOs. It's a really good synthesizer, well, when it's, uh, when it's actually working and put together. Since Raymond Wilson Wilson's untimely passing back in 2016, Synthcube have been taking on Music From Outer Space Legacy. They've been maintaining the Music From Outer Space website and continued with stocking Music From Outer Space projects, all the way from bare PCBs and bare panels up to full-blown kits. Synthcube have also got all of Raymond Wilson's synthesizers. They've got all the working prototypes out on display and I got to have a chat with Mike over at Synthcube about Music From Outer Space. This is uh, Ray Wilson's uh home built uh, music from outer space, he calls it the monster. Not a computer, I promise. Hey Mike, how's it going? So tell us a little bit about how Synthcube comes into all of this. So uh, after Ray died uh, uh, in 2016, uh, we purchased the whole business from his family. So we got, you know, his personal stuff, which is like super awesome to have around and keep running. Uh, but we also have the, uh, you know, the documents so we can continue making his PCBs and selling those to the public. We've also converted a lot of his designs to Eurorack format too, so those are available. So regarding Raymond Wilson, was he a trained electrical engineer or how did it turn out and come about that he got into DIY synthesizers? Uh, he did end up working uh, in the uh, electrical engineering field, but I don't think he tra went to traditional school for uh, um, electronic engineering. He was a, a a metal fabricator of some sort and uh, um, became interested in synths when he heard uh, Switched On Bach um, and then sort of started studying uh, electronics for himself, just reading books and doing math um, until he started offering DIY to uh, the public. And what's the kind of timeline of when he started to do these DIY projects? So when he first got uh, started doing, offering like DIY projects in the, I think it's late 70s, um, he was doing, it was called Waveform Processing, and those were available through uh, Radio Electronics Magazine. Um, 
But then he finally started the website in like 2008. And the first product was the, uh, the SoundLab Mini uh, synth. So I know you got a whole load of Raymond Wilson's prototypes and synthesizers and stuff like that, but I've got a rather dilapidated SoundLab Ultimate sitting right here. I don't suppose you've got the V SoundLab Ultimate, the one that you see on the website. And that is the one in the pictures, isn't it? It is. And then you've got the expander as well. Yep. The next one. What is that one? There's like another like uh, CV converter expansion. So yeah, you've got the, the ultimate, the expander, and then that expansion there. Basically all the units that you see on the website, we have somewhere in the shop here. Wow, so I guess you've got all the projects that are in the pictures on the Music From Outer Space website. Have you got that little uh, mini keyboard? Do you have the mini keyboard? Oh, that is the one. It's no, this is just a, like a capacitive touch. So you touch it directly, yep. So regarding all of Raymond Wilson's uh, synthesizers and prototype synthesizers, they're all in wooden cases. Yeah, most of the stuff that Ray built is, is in a wooden case, with the exception of the, the Mark II. He did a revised panel to fit the, um, this uh, aluminum bud box. Wow, that looks So what do you think of the most popular music from outer space projects? The weird sound generator and the alien screamer are like definitely the most popular emphasis kits on great like first um, time builder things. And why do you think that's the case? Yeah, I think that's I mean a really big part of the ethos of emphasis was like making it accessible and you know visual and uh, you know, easy to understand. So you know the monster synth, how, how big is that in real life? It looks pretty massive. Um, I think, it, I'd say each of the larger cases is like four and a half feet tall. Um, I'll stand up real quick. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm six feet tall, so, uh, and this is on like a, just a regular old table. So regarding the size of the synthesizer modules, are they all the same size? Are they Moog 5U kind of size? It's not truly 5U. Uh, even within the case, there's some different sized panels. Um, really? Yeah, I think he sort of just worked with the metal stock that he had on hand. A lot of these, uh, um, the modules in the Monster use a pre-drilled panel. Um, so there's like, you know, maybe 20 holes already in there. And then he build like a paper face for whatever particular module he was building and so the, the holes that he didn't use are covered by that piece of laminated paper. And we actually, we have the old smaller cases that the mo these modules probably lived in before he got to the point where he could host a, the massive case. Well, that was really interesting. Thanks a lot, Mike. Have a lovely day. You too. So yeah, that's Mike over at SynthCube. And uh, yeah, they've basically got everything of Raymond Wilson's and stuff. It sounds like a right DIY synthesizer treasure trove. Anyway, after talking to Mike, my plan was actually to sort out this SoundLab Ultimate. As you can see, it's a little bit far gone. It's gonna need quite a bit of work. And I started cutting off the uh, circuit board from the panel in the plan of reworking this circuit board and then also rewiring it to make it quite a bit neater. But by an amazingly timed stroke of luck, a lovely fella came to the museum with a box that had an unfinished project inside it from way back in 2011. And my gosh, it actually turned out to be uh, a SoundLab Ultimate. But what's better is it was from a very early batch and it has the original panel and Ultimate, an Ultimate Expander. Oh my gosh. So let's have a look at what we've got from Keith in regards to the music from outer space art. I cut my teeth on relays at an early age when I looked after a totalizator board at Derby Greyhound Stadium. It was basically a Strouger telephone exchange converted to eight individual adding machines, which were then displayed on six by five lamp boxes. The sound of rotary switches, my world for 15 years until we went to eight Eight corn atom based systems. Music from outer space board, this is the ultimate. Then there's a blank expander board. So the chances of that, that was literally within the same couple of days of me realizing how much of a faff this was gonna be to Keith popping over with a project that has been sitting on his shelf for over a decade. Thanks a heck of a lot, Keith, because it really helps out with this video because like you've seen, it's got the original issue panels, but none of this is gonna be any use till we put it together. So the first thing we have to do is finish populating this board and populating this board, and then we can build them into something. It looks like Keith has done a very good job of soldering these already. We'll double check them just in case, but I'm sure it's all gonna be pretty good. But we'll quickly have to fill in the blanks, have a look, see what we're missing, and then, yeah, finish it off. As well as completely building the expander, which has some extra functions. It's got another filter, I think the sample and holds and things like that in there. So let's get that put together as well. I printed out the part list for both of these from the Music From Outer Space website. So we're gonna go through these and basically populate both of them. 
I started by putting everything that I already had around in that I had that matched up. The thing with music from outer space projects, there are quite a lot of different resistor values and some of them are a bit funky and you can kind of get the closest to most of them, but a lot of them it's good to get bang on the actual uh, part list. So this actually was done over a couple of months because I kept on buying parts and then forgetting parts and then buying parts. So I just bought a bit and then soldered it in and then it just over a month or so it started getting all put together and that is all of the parts put in there, the panels have got all the potentiometers, all of the chips and all of the resistors and capacitors are in there now, so it's time to go to the next step, which is putting it inside this acrylic case. I built it uh, out of 10 millimeter thick acrylic that was cut to size, and then I used these heat inserts uh, to be able to screw the parts in. These are a bit more hard wearing than tapping straight into the acrylic plastic. I found that if you do that over time, if you're pulling the panels on and off loads, then it's not going to be as good. So using the metal inserts, I think is a good shout here. Uh, I've also used the metal inserts to uh, bolt the actual circuit boards down because, uh, yeah. And then I used the dope for knobs. These are the knobs that are dope for knobs. There's a link to them below, but they are in black and white. They look really smart for this one, I think. Anyway, look at that. How nice is that? And then I started wiring in the power supply into both of the SoundLab and the SoundLab expander boards. And then as you can see, something went wrong. Oh, shit. So it was a 4066 chip that burnt out and then took the power supplies regulator with it as well. So I had to swap both of them. To be honest, I think I got a fake dodgy batch of 4066s because that isn't the first time that that's happened. Anyway, I started wiring in the panel wires over to the uh, top mounting boards. This is for the outputs and the inputs that go into the big jacks. So we've got the back of the potentiometers and things like that and they all have little labels on where we need to put the wires. So we've got to wire all of these little wires from the panel onto the circuit board. This in a Patreon live stream, I spent about five or six hours non-stop doing this and you could see my energy slowly changing. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Oh, we've got life. Yes. The great thing about wiring it up bit by bit is you can test it whilst you put certain bits in. So I started by putting the oscillator in, testing it, and then the filter. <coughs> we have a burning smell. Ah! For some reason that's burning. That's a sizzler. Yeah, this problem still isn't sorted. That was the ring modulator chip. For some reason, it kept on burning up. I've got another version on the way and hopefully that will solve the problem. Anyway, late into the night, I kept on just soldering and soldering and soldering. This part of the project felt like it never ended. managed to get it all done in one evening so I had to spend a bit of time the following morning just to finish it off. So over the last couple of evenings I've wired the panel to the circuit board. Uh, it's quite known with the music from outer space stuff that it's no like small feat to actually do the panel wiring. You follow the diagram at the back of the circuit board there's a bunch of numbers and you match them to where they go on the circuit board. This all in all took about eight hours. I remember it being slightly quicker if you do it in a spaghetti junction kind of fashion you just wire to wires but I went for a little bit of a neat thing we'll neaten it up in a little bit but it's time that we can make a few funky noises with it.
all seems to be working. I haven't calibrated the oscillators so they're in tune with the keyboard yet. So now we've got to wire up the panel for the expander module, the ultimate expander. Yeah, and then we were back on panel wiring again. This took about four or five hours. It was a bit quicker than the other one because uh, there's less controls, obviously. There's less wires. But I tried to make it as neat as possible. I think that's what made it quite a lengthy, pro lengthy project was uh, actually getting it all clean. And then as you can see afterwards, I wax laced it together so it was nice and neat and stayed together and just wouldn't mean there was any broken wires and stuff. After that, I calibrated it. So this is the bit where you get the oscillators and you adjust some trim pots on there to make sure that the octave octaves match and then that means it'll all be in tune but it's just a case of a bit of trial and error doing a bit of twisting here doing a bit of twisting there until when you play on the keyboard it all sounds like it's in tune there's other ways of doing it but this is the way i do it In that last little jam, all of the sounds were coming from the SoundLab Ultimate and the Ultimate Expander. It was of course being sequenced by the Keystep Pro, but out of this was a synth line with lots of variation, as well as a couple of drum sounds, including a snare, which was white noise that was going into a filter over here and then into a VCA just to kind of turn it on and off. And a kick drum, which was the envelope generator over here, triggering one of the oscillators to go boom. Within this, there's a lot of modulation sources. You'll already see when looking at it, there's plenty of flashing lights. There's a repeating gate here that turns on and off. Ooh, ooh. There's a couple of LFOs. There's a clock speed inside the sample and hold. So you put all of these together with the oscillators and the extra bits over here, and you can make it truly make some regenerative patches, like this one, which is called High Fiber Diet in Outer Space. There's a 25 minute version of that for background listening over on my Patreon. Anyway, let's have a closer look at what's actually going on here. So the music from Outer Space Sound Lab Ultimate is the biggest uh, synthesizer DIY project that he offers. There's obviously a vocoder that is slightly larger and a sequencer that is a bit bigger in space, but this is the biggest synth. It's because it's got three oscillators that you can, you can listen to. Like here's one. And you can flip between a square and a sawtooth on this oscillator. Pulse width. Each of the oscillators are exactly the same.
Then these go through this mixer and then go through a classic uh, music from outer space style low pass filter. The filter is hardwired to the output of one of the low frequency oscillators, the LFOs. Which has a bunch of different settings. That goes into a voltage controlled amplifier, which is modulated by the other LFO over here. So we can go. It's pretty cool that there's two LFOs and they can go from really slow to really quick. Also the filter and the amplifier are hardwired into the envelope generator right here. Let's get a banana jack and plug the input of the envelope generator into this repeating gate right here. Actually, let's plug it into the output of the sample and hold. Plug the input of the sample and hold into the output of the white noise. And then the output of the sample and hold into the input of one of these oscillators. The other thing is it's banana jacks, so you can stack the banana jacks on top of each other. There is of course a whole load of other things that you can do. For instance, each of the oscillators have a sync input. If you get a jack cable and plug the output of the SoundLab Ultimate into the input of the Ultimate Expander, that will plug them in together. Let's plug the output of the Ultimate Expander into the speakers. Now the output of this SoundLab Ultimate is now accessible via these banana jacks down here. It says Ultimate Mixer out. And then you can plug it into the mixer. Now I can hear it coming out. This filter has a high pass mode. <laughs> It's got a band pass mode. And of course, it's got a low pass mode. There's a bunch of other things on the Ultimate Expander, including an ADSR envelope generator, which is just a more advanced version of this one right here. You've also got a couple of other things like an envelope follower here, and also an analog multiplier, which is sort of a ring modulator. However, this is the only thing on this whole DIY build I haven't got working yet. It seems to keep on cooking the chips. So I've got to have another look at what's going on there. Anyway, let's get it plugged into a sequencer and see how it works with other synthesizers.
So that is the music from Outer Space Sound Lab Ultimate. I think it's got everything you need for a semi-modular classic style subtractive synthesizer. And I think it's for a great project for a late beginner intermediate kind of uh, builder who wants to just have an all-in-one synthesizer that they could build on. Of course, you can still get the PCBs, you can get the panels, or you could just build your own panel. I did that, as you can see. I reckon you could probably swap these if you're not a fan of the uh, stackable banana jacks. You could probably swap them with mini jacks. You might be at a push be able to squeeze big jacks in there. But let's say if you want to swap this with little jacks, for instance, you could directly wire it into uh, Eurorack synthesizers without using converters. That doesn't mean that actual modifications would be really awesome for this machine. For instance, it's crying out for a clock input on the sample and hold. That's reasonably easy to do. Slightly more difficult modifications would be adding voltage control to the LFOs. Not impossible, but it would be a useful addition. You could also drill a couple of holes here and there for a couple more LEDs. For instance, on the envelope generator so you can see it going boo, and then another one over here on this envelope generator. The DIY music from Outer Space wall warp power supply that's sat in here is kind of stretched to its limit with both of these so it could probably do with maybe a better power supply or one of them for the Sound Lab Ultimate and one of them for the Ultimate Expander. I have actually modified it already a little bit. The voltage controlled input for the oscillators that are on top of here. I've connected them all together so they all receive the same control voltage input until you wire a jack into the switch jacks and that breaks the contacts. This means it's quick and easy to have the oscillators playing the same thing at the same time without a load of uh, jacks going all over the place already. I am so pleased that I've managed to make a Music From Outer Space Sound Lab Ultimate that actually works properly. It feels great and I'm really grateful for Keith to drop off the actual original 2011 kind of kit and I'm really pleased to have actually put in the time to get it finished. All in all I would estimate that back in 2011 2012 Keith put about 10 hours of soldering into this. I think I put another 10 hours of it into there and then about another eight or nine hours of soldering the wires to the front panel. I'd say all in all minus the research and sourcing the components this probably took about 35 hours to put together. You could download a funky sound pack of the Sound Lab Ultimate over on my Patreon, as well as a couple of Song Jam downloads and a download of that nice 25 minute generative patch. And supporting over there really helps with the projects and the museum. Speaking of the museum, if you want to play this, this is going to be there. There'll be a headphone going out and you can patch to your heart's content. But anyway, I'm Luke Mumno Computer. This is the Sound Lab Ultimate. Don't be scared to try it and definitely try and build one of these. Have a lovely time.